Oh, shake, shake. Oh, there it is. It's safe to say I spoil my students. <laughs> You're allowed to kind of add a little bit more tech tools. Yeah, that looks great. You guys did a great job. They figured it out, no problem. Wednesday, we are done with midterms and now we are back to the daily grind and I'm happy about it because I did miss my students. I'm actually getting ready for a lab today, um, so I am pretty well prepped. Um, we are actually examining a single replacement reaction, so we'll be looking at silver nitrate and copper wire. The students, of course, don't know that it's a single replacement reaction yet because I'm using this kind of as a, I guess, a modality for teaching about single replacement reactions. And then hopefully that'll lead into a discussion of redox. Right? We're trying, we always try to come up with explanations for our observations, but that looks really awesome. There's definitely a lot of changes going on. You can definitely see it. Good job. Why I didn't vlog yesterday at the end of school, it was because we had a squall out of nowhere. So I didn't have a chance to catch back in with you, um, but all went well yesterday with making their SMART goals. And now what I want to do is show you the interactive digital notebook that I made to help support them. In my honors chemistry classes, I've been focusing on different um, ways to incorporate some like digital media of some kind. And so I've been using interactive digital notebooks to help the students spend some time reflecting and so one of the things that I wanted them to do was to set some SMART goals in chemistry since it's the mid-year. Um, so we finished midterms and this was the first activity that they performed. So an interactive digital notebook is similar to a notebook that you would have, for example, on paper. The only difference is, is you're allowed to kind of add a little bit more tech tools um, to it. So you can add polls and questions. You can also um, embed videos, things like that. So um, this is what it looked like. Um, what's also kind of cool is that everything is a link. So when the kids click on all the different tabs, they it links to different things. Um, I also provide um, guidance as far as like the types of activities that they have and the order that they should be following them, them in. Um, so you can see every um, activity type has a number and then it asks them to do something with it. I included different question marks here that would support the students if they were having trouble following through or if they needed a brain break. Sometimes it was like a fun thing, like a meme. Um, other times it was a video that was just a little bit of a brain break. Um, but the goal of this digital interactive notebook was for the students to um, spend time reflecting on what do they really want to accomplish in chemistry for the rest of the school year. Um, so now that we have a, our second semester is underway, what do they really want to do? What do they want to improve upon? What can they reflect on to improve their performance? To do this, I thought the SMART goal strategy was the best way to do it. So what I did was I set up a card sort, a digital card sort, where the students can click and drag um, these cards to the um, different parts of the mnemonic, and then they matched up the questions. Um, this allowed them to first learn about what SMART goals are, and then they went ahead and read some um, articles about you know, different strategies that they can use in order to reach their goals. And then finally, they had to make their SMART goal in this part here, so they would type in each part, and then they would click and drag it into the pertinent sections. Overall, the students um, are doing a pretty good job with it. I have really liked what I've been seeing with them. The only, I guess, argument that I have is that some of the students aren't really enough, like very specific as far as the actionable items that they need to take in order to be successful and reach their goal. But um, not bad for the first time I did this. 
of the day on Thursday. It's about 3.30 in the afternoon. Had a great day with my students, but I have to be honest, I did feel slightly disorganized today. We have one lab each day, and this was a lab that was actually two periods, so all my classes are kind of in like different places. So I had one class that was working on their SMART goals. I had two classes that were actually classifying reactions, and then I had one class that was completing their lab experiment. So it felt a little kind of disorganized, but mostly I think just because I'm used to doing the same lesson over and over again, it's good to mix things up, but I do get a little self-conscious, but I think it went fine. Um, the students were really into the classifying reactions activity. They figured it out, no problem. Um, this year was a little bit easier than years prior, and I'm not really sure why. I'll have to think about that. Um, one small change that I did make to my classifying reactions activity is I didn't give them quite as many reactions. I used to give them five of each type, so I, you know, obviously we teach synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion. And I used to give five of each type. Instead, I decided to give three of each type. And that seemed to really kind of cut down on the ambiguity with the different reaction types. So I think I would definitely do that again in a heartbeat. It definitely allowed them to kind of focus more on the patterns as far as being so overwhelmed with so many different reactions. Um, but then what the students did is once they classified them into the five different categories, then they actually glued the reactions on a piece of cardstock. And so they created their own model. And then after that, they were able to go ahead and analyze their model. And I had them predicting products in no time. It went really well. So with that said, I'm going to get out of here because I am tired. I'm going to go relax. Tomorrow is Friday, though, and I can't wait. You made me nervous. Did you not think that's one of those? Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, no, this is good, this is good. This is good, so let me just make sure with this last one. Yeah, that looks great. You guys did a great job. Okay, nice work. Well, good morning and happy Friday. Uh, finally made it, TGIF. Definitely a little tired today. Looking at myself on screen, I feel like I look tired, but that's okay. We'll get through it. Another busy day is ahead. Some of my students are finishing up their classifying reactions um, at Pogel activity. Um, some of my students are just starting the activity. And then, of course, I have a lab in there. So I'm going to get started for the day. I have to kind of write some stuff down on my whiteboard, and then I will check in with you a little bit later on. What I would do, grab the grab the white piece of paper and gently put it underneath it so we can really see it. And then yeah, you'll you can hold the copper wire probably and then I would shake shake. Oh shake shake. Oh there it is. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Whoa. Right? It's insane. Ace, what did you do? Oh, the copper's still a little black. Wait, so then if we theoretically left it here with the same thing happen. Yeah, let's do it. Let's leave it there and see what happens. Okay. Okay. I'm in my area where I store all my materials and equipment that I don't have space for in, you know, obviously on my cart or in my office area. So I came in here because I wanted to put the stuff back that I was using, but I thought I would show you the activity that I did with my students today on classifying reactions. So it's super easy. All you have to do is you give your students a page of reactions. So I actually, I cut this down. Um, I think I mentioned it yesterday, but I cut this down. I used to have, um, two more of each set uh, of each reaction type. Um, but instead now I actually cut it down to having three. And so what the students do is they cut out the slips of paper and then um, they classify them into the five categories. And then what they do is they take it and they glue it to a piece of cardstock. Looks something like that. So I'm in this area because I actually have to put all my scissors and all that stuff back. So I have all my glue sticks and scissors and stuff. Um, so I was gonna put all that stuff back, but um, yeah, this is where I store all my 
chemistry goodness. I'll show you what it looks like. Are you ready? I don't know. Dun dun dun. There it all is. Look at all that stuff. Oh my gosh. Um, I think it's safe to say I spoil my students. <laughs> I always make sure they have exactly what they need. Um, you know, sometimes it's just easier to buy stuff on sale, like when Target's having a sale or like Amazon has those amazing deals. So um, I buy a lot of stuff in bulk and I keep and hold on to it. You know, I'll give it to other teachers if they need it. You know, I'll donate things or whatever. But um, this is kind of where I store all my stuff. But as you can see, like all my stuff, I have like all this stuff sitting here and I really don't have any space for it. Fortunately, I have an awesome colleague who actually lets me borrow some of her space. Um, so I'm going to finish kind of cleaning up in here and then I'll check back in with you because I still got a little bit more time. I'm on my prep period right now, so I figured I'd do this. Well, I made it. It's the end of the day. It's Friday. It's about, it's about 3.30. I had a great day with my students. My students were doing a really great job with our study of chemical reactions. Um, they worked really hard today. Really, really I'm very happy with them and I, I hope I hope I always let them know. I mean, I know like I share that with them positive feedback and I say, you guys worked really hard today. Thank you so much. You know, I thank them all the time for their help with um, cleaning up the classroom, especially when we do activities and things. Um, you know, I, I know I do a lot for them to let them know how much I appreciate them, but I guess I sometimes get so busy with um, just like setting up activities and I get stressed and I just want them to always know how much I appreciate everything that they do to make our classroom environment a really great place to be and um, you know I it's a work in progress I feel like I'll keep working at trying to improve the feedback that I give but I always want my students to know how much I appreciate them because our learning environment is amazing because they are and um, I think they we I think we have a lot closer bond, get it, because um, the students are collaborating with each other more, they're working with me more, we're conferencing, I'm having them set SMART goals and I'm having them reflect and it's while we learn chemistry, we also spend time learning about the process and focusing on the process of learning and, you know, me saying things to them like hey like it's not me versus you like we're on the same team and I want you to be as successful as you want to be um, I think that has made a really huge difference in my classroom environment so I am going to get out of here thank you so much for watching this week I hope you found something valuable that you can use in your classroom um, I hope to check in with you next week hopefully I have some interesting lessons to share Thanks so much for watching to the end of this video. I hope you found the information helpful as you teach science to your students. I really don't want to lose touch, so please make sure that you hit both like and subscribe so you get notifications every time I post a new video. And I'll catch you later.